Why does your dog look and feel so amazing when they come home from the groomer? I'd be willing to bet you wish you could send them to the groomer about once every two weeks. The question is, can you achieve this at home? Absolutely! Thanks for joining me today. I am Amy Lee, certified professional pet groomer since 2003, but more importantly, I am your go-to groomer on the web. Stay put! I'm going to share with you some professional grooming secrets that you won't want to miss. By the end of this video, you will know how to brush your dog like a pro. The boss! The big cheese! You are going to nail this! See, the difference between you and your groomer is knowledge, techniques, and tools. That's the only thing that separates you from your groomer. I'm going to give you the knowledge. I'm going to teach you the techniques, and I'm going to share with you the tools of the trade. It's a secret, so don't tell anybody. But these tools are available to you the same as they're available to me. And I'm going to let you know what they are and where to get them. Now let's take a look at how Go Groomer can help you increase the bond you share with your pet. Are you ready? Well, let's dive right into how to brush your dog, tips and tricks. We're gonna start with tools. What we're gonna need for this job is a comb, a slicker brush, and a quicker slicker. And this is Gus. He is a one-year-old golden doodle, and he has a massive amount of coat, as you can see. I like my golden doodles to have a lot of coat. They look very nice. Uh, it's a lot of work though, guys, a lot of brushing. So I began by spraying a little bit of the quicker slicker into the coat. I know I've talked about that product a lot and I don't know if you guys have researched it, but it's, it's, it's a great product made by nature specialty. It definitely helps you to brush through that coat. It, it easily releases the dead unwanted hair to come out of the coat and then, and into the brush. Now we're using an Activet brush and I've talked a lot about those brushes as well guys and you really should go check them out. I will link these products into the description of this video below so you can go check them out. They are what I recommend and you know I'm only recommending to you the best products. Now notice guys as I'm combing here I am using the comb to show me what I haven't brushed out thoroughly. This tells me that this area needs brushed out. Now I know what you're already thinking. You don't have a table to work with your dog and it's very crucial to getting this job done, especially for certain dogs. They can be quite uncooperative. But look at these options here, guys. I will link them in the description below. You can buy portable tables and easily store them in a closet and pull them out when it's time to brush out your dog. This is great. So back to business here. Continuing on with guests, we're spraying the quicker slicker, we're slicker brushing, taking a section at a time. As we're line brushing, which I'm holding the hair up and pulling the hair out with my brush in the other hand. And you'll do this all throughout your dog, just in segments, just line brushing like you're going down a line. And then after you've thoroughly brushed it, we're going to check it with a comb. If your comb is snagging, then you need to go back to brushing. The comb checks your work. Remember that, guys and continue to do this throughout your dog's coat. Now we're working on his leg, we're gonna spray the quicker slicker and we're gonna start line brushing. You can see it really needs brushed out and if we don't brush it out, it's going to mat. And with the length of coat that Gus has on him right now, this would mat within a week. So notice that the hair is definitely loosening up. You can clearly see that we're getting hair in the brush. Gus is not a shedding dog, but I am going to get hair in the brush. What that is is dead hair. Just the same as when we brush our hair, we get dead hair out in the brush. It doesn't mean that he's a shedding dog. There's so many different coat types and people get confused. So I just wanted to clear that up, that all dogs will release hair. 
it's dead hair. So continue on here. You know, you need to get into all those areas. You know, we're pulling the hair around to the side of his leg now and thoroughly brushing it, line brushing. This is the technique, guys. We talked about the tools. The tools are the comb, the brush, and the quicker slicker. The technique we're using is called line brushing. And this you will use on any breed. So don't confuse that. This is the technique. This is proper brushing. And you will do this on all breeds. And then we will check our work with the comb. That's what the comb is for. Don't mistake in that. The comb is there to check your work. I want to remind you guys about the pet wash station review that we did at Pet Value. These stations are amazing and they're set up for you and your pet. Easy, comfortable, affordable, and professional equipment. Don't forget to take advantage of those guys. Back to brushing guys. So spraying that quicker slicker in there and then we're going to thoroughly line brush. You can see how his hair really needs brushed out. Now he's not matted. He has some questionable areas but he's not matted. So if your dog looks, you know, his hair is real clumpy and you know, you're just not brushing him enough or her. And if that's the case, listen, don't, don't be jammed about it. Don't, don't think, oh, you know, I, I don't want to trim his hair too short. You know, I, you got to be realistic. If you can't keep it brushed out, you need a shorter haircut. Don't be upset about that. And I talk my clients into that all the time. I tell them, you know, your dog is active. He loves to be outside. He loves to swim or whatever it is that he does. But if you're not brushing him out like every night after he comes back from doing all these crazy things, then you can't have a dog in long coat. I mean, you can't. It, it, there's nothing wrong with it. But this is what you're going to have to do. Now, this job here with Gus, Gus is a big dog. He's about a 70-pound dog. His coat is high maintenance, you know, whether he's a poodle or a bouvier or, you know, anything with this type of coat. If you can't dedicate an hour a week at least to thoroughly brush him out, he cannot be in this type of haircut. Have you ordered your Activet brush yet? I'm telling you, it is the best tool in your toolbox. You got to get one. I'll put a link to that for you in the description below. So back to combing, we're checking our work. We just brushed out this leg, comb is going through it nicely. Now remember, he's not freshly bathed. We're just brushing him out. This is between bathing. Gus's coat, the length that it is and the coat type that he has, he needs to be washed about every three weeks or he will mat even if I'm brushing him every week you have to clean that coat and bring it back to good it, it just harbors way too much stuff and and it will mat just be, it'll stick together just as if you had too much product in your hair and you didn't wash it out their hair is a magnet it's because it's there to protect their skin it's there to collect stuff that's what it does but we do have to clean it guys we have to clean it and we have to brush it you can't just brush this coat and you can't just bathe it you have to do both or you will not have a nice coat you will have a matted coat you cannot do one or the other you have to do both now I'm going to share something with you that I struggle with as a groomer because I know my clients bring in these beautiful dogs like Gus and they like the coat. They love the long coat, but it is not in good shape. And I have to look at them and explain to them before I even get started because it's my job to assess this dog before, before I get started with my groom with him and also give the owner a heads up as to what we're going to be doing. And I have to explain to them sometimes that uh, they, they're they not brushing their dog good enough. And I, and I hear, but I am brushing him. And, and you know, and I, and I, it's such a hard choice of words because I just want to be, you know, just to the point, but I have to try not to hurt their feelings. I know they probably have been brushing their dog, but I'm sitting there telling them, well, you know what, you didn't do a very good job or it's not good enough. So I have to put that nicely. And the point is, is they're not doing a good enough job. And that's why I'm creating these videos. 
because I want you guys to be able to do a good enough job if you do really want to have your dog in this much coat. And if you want to take the dog to the groomer to get, you know, beautified and, and get trimmed up and but not have to take a whole lot of coat off because you like the coat, then you have to maintain in between because if you don't, us groomers, we have to take that off. And the reason we have to take it off is because the dog is having to wear the mats. And you may not know they're matted, but if you simply have a comb like I'm showing you in these demos, guys, and try to run it through your dog, you'll know what the groomer's trying to explain to you. It is matted. It's not. It doesn't look like a knotted mat, but it is matted. And I think it's important for everybody to understand that the groomers typically would not choose to, to have to take this coat short, but oftentimes they will have to do that. And uh, it's, it's very tough to explain that to the client. So now you can see we're working on Gus's tail here. And this is a, you know, another area that can be a bit troublesome for you guys. It definitely is a, it's a thick area. It has a lot of long hair it's long hair but you know figure if your hair was that long take a look at Gus's tail if your hair was that long and you didn't brush it every day what do you think would happen to it it's gonna mat you got to be able to brush it out and you got to be able to get a comb through it just like we're doing right here that tells you that it's brushed out good enough and what you're doing when you're brushing them out is you're removing the dead hair the dead hair is what becomes the mats it's not that the hair is just coiling around itself, and at times it does, but it's the dead hair that is not being brushed out of the coat that causes the mats. And you can demat it. It can be brushed out. When I say demat, I don't mean to use any other tools other than a brush and a comb and maybe a little product like Quicker Slicker or um, another one of my favorites is uh, Magic Touch. That's a great product. Other than that, stay away from any other tools. I mean, as a professional groomer, guys, I don't use those other tools. If I can't brush the dog's mats out, and believe me, these ActiVet brushes do a fabulous job. If I can't brush it out, I'm not going to start ripping through the coat with some rake or... I mean, there's so many different tools, but I got to tell you what they do is they slice through the coat. That's fine. I can slice through the coat and brush it out and now your dog's coat is damaged and I'm not that kind of groomer I'm not gonna do that and that's why I'm teaching you all not to do that as well I'm teaching you what to do the right thing to do and taking care of your dog's coat means to not damage it and it's very important because you know I say it all the time guys and and I know that you're probably starting to believe me and I hope so but their their coat protects them and we don't want to damage it we don't want to ruin it we want to maintain it it's very important so now we're moving on up the ladder here we're getting to Gus's top knot area to his his ears and his neck and he has a lot of hair on his neck I leave that long so that he looks really big and you know bouncy and, and not so skinny because really he's so much like a poodle underneath this coat he's very scrawny <laughs> He, uh, he's not real massive, but I like him to look a little more massive than he is. So, therefore, because I leave the coat, I really have a lot of maintenance to do with it. And if, if I chose not to brush him and to keep his coat in the condition it needs to be, then I would need to cut it shorter. And believe me, as a groomer, I have no problem doing that with my own pets. If I don't have time because we're busy camping and hiking and swimming in ponds or creeks or the ocean or wherever I'm taking my dog I'm gonna trim his coat accordingly he cannot have a heavy coat like this if that's what I'm going to be doing with him and it's springtime here for me and I do do a lot with my dog outside my family does our family loves to, to do things outside and our dogs right there with us this coat on Gus, this is going to disappear soon. I'm going to take it down. I'm going to I'm not going to shave him cuz I don't need to cuz I do brush him. If I didn't brush him, I would shave him because he doesn't need to be walking around with mats. But the point is is you have to modify your trim depending on what it is you like to do with your dog so that they're comfortable. Quicker slicker, active brush and a comb 
and this is the dead hair we got out of Gus, who is a non-shedding breed. I have an invitation for you. I am going to have a Go Groomer audience episode. So here's what you need to do. In the description of this video, there is detailed instructions about how you can submit this footage to me and the information that I'm going to need from you. Um, it's specific, so read those details. There are some issues that we have to work through with YouTube here um, to keep everything uh, legit, you know, for you and for everybody else. Um, so read those details because if you don't follow them specifically, I won't be able to use your footage and I really, really want to. It's going to be in the very near future. I need footage from you guys. I would like you to send me a short clip, about two minutes, no longer, of you and your pet, you grooming them or you showing me examples of areas that are troublesome for you and your pet. Uh, areas you don't know how to to approach in grooming at home that are a problem area for you and your pet. And I am going to broadcast that footage in the audience episode of Go Groomer. I'm going to talk specifically to you about your pet and those situations that may be difficult for you. Or um, maybe you can send me footage of, of things that you've learned from Go Groomer. I would like to speak directly to you guys as I'm viewing the footage. You'll send me an email with your footage attached to your go to groomer at gmail.com. It's listed in the description. Just copy and paste it, then you know you have the right address. You can take that footage directly with your smartphone. You can have somebody else video it for you um, to make things easier. And talk to me in the footage and explain to me what you want me to see and what you want to share with others here in this episode and what I can do to add value to that content for you. I will be sending you a correspondence email once I receive your footage and explain to you what I'm planning to use with your specific footage and when it's going to air because I don't want you to miss it. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and ring the bell. Then you're not gonna miss any of these details. One very important detail that you can't leave out, guys. In your footage, you must say, I give Amy Lee my permission to use this footage on YouTube. You must say that in the video because it is important for YouTube and it's important for you. So let's cover our bases and let's move forward here. I am so excited about this episode and I hope you guys are too. We've come a long way together already and I can't wait to tie us together even more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.